Discop offers a variety of capabilities for tenants, users, roles, and permissions management for your B2B application. To build a complete B2B application, Discope offers the following capabilities. Ability to create and manage tenants, create and manage roles and permissions, ability to associate users with tenants, roles and permissions, and validate these tenants, roles and permissions for the long-term user. In addition, Discope offers capabilities to be able to configure SAML authentication, skim configuration, and groups mapping from the identity provider to your roles. Let's first look at ability to create and managing tenants. You can create tenant in the Dscope console. That requires a tenant name. Tenant ID is optional. It will be auto-generated if you do not provide a tenant ID. You can optionally also provide a domain. This domain is used for auto-assigning the user to the tenant if they log in from this particular company domain. Notice that every capability that I'm going to cover, including create tenant, edit tenant, configure different parts of the system, can also be done using SDK and APIs that are provided by Dscope. So for adding a tenant, let's quickly see how it can be done. Dscope offers a variety of backend SDKs, Node.js, Python, Go, which can be used for creating a tenant easily. You provide tenant name, as we saw, tenant ID is optional, and you can call it either with create with ID, or you can create the tenant without the ID. As we saw in the console UI, domain can also be provided as one of the optional parameters. So this is how easy is it to manage tenants. Typically, we recommend modeling a tenant for each of your customers, and users can be associated with the tenant. Next, let's look at how can we manage roles and permissions in Dscope. If you go to the Dscope console in the authorization section, you can easily find creating new roles, creating new permissions, and associating permissions with roles. Creating a permission is as easy as giving a permission name and a small description, or creating a role. You can give it a role name, description, and optional permissions that have been defined can be chosen as well. The roles and permissions for the user are delivered to your application after successful authentication in the JOT. You can also create roles and permissions using the SDK. The authorization section in the documentation covers this. Similar to the tenant management, you can do this using the backend SDK. You can create permissions, update permissions, and delete permissions. Creating permission is as simple as the permission name, description, and calling create. Similarly, a role can be created by providing name, description, permissions that you want to associate with that role, and calling the SDK. Next, let's look at associating roles, permissions, and tenant with a user. Each user in Dscope can be associated with a tenant and a role. You can easily do that by editing the user and associating a tenant and a role. Notice that each user can be assigned to more than one tenant as well, and the roles could be different for each tenant. So the user can be an admin in one tenant, versus just a regular user in another tenant. The same operation can be performed using the SDK. Using the create user call in SDK, you can easily create a user and associate tenant and roles with that user. If you want to associate tenant and roles for an existing user, you can use the update user call. Notice this update or create user SDK call is required only if you are not enabling self-registration using single sign-on or other methods for the user. Now let's look at how do you validate roles, permissions, and tenant for a user that has signed in. For validating the roles, permissions, and tenant for the user, 
you can look at the authorization section of the documentation and go down to the validate roles and permissions. This particular section covers calls for validating roles, validating permissions, and if you want to validate this with a particular tenant, validating tenant roles and validating tenant permissions. Please note that before validating roles, permissions and tenant, you should validate the session token to make sure the user is a valid user using the session validation calls from the SDK. This is covered in the session validation section in the documentation. And finally, let's look at how to configure SSO, KIM, and groups mapping in DSCO. For each tenant that is created in your system, you can either provide all the metadata for your IDP and other details in the DSCO console, or you can configure using the DSCO SDK. The SSO section under tenant management and DSCO documentation covers how to provide IDP details and configure SSO for each tenant. The skim section covers skim provisioning for each of the tenants so that users can be auto-provisioned and deprovisioned. SCO provides ability to map the user attributes and groups automatically from your IDP to the user's roles. Using the add user attribute mapping, you can choose the Dscope user attributes mapped from the IDP user value that you may have. For example, if your IDP has email attribute, that could be mapped to email. If your IDP has a full name, full name could be mapped to display name, and so on and so forth. In addition, you can automatically pull the groups from your IDP and map to different roles that you have already defined in the system. If you configure groups mapping to Dscope roles, this will enable the users to automatically get correct roles after they log in. And those roles can be validated using the validate permissions and validating roles SDK calls that we talked earlier. To recap, Dscope provides a complete user management, tenant management, including SSO, skim, and role-based access control capabilities in the product.